Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes. You're listening to landscapebusinesscourse.com. And today we have another interview here on Roundup, the landscaper's best show for interviews for other landscapers. So really looking forward to it today. Uh, a few weeks ago, there's a few of you that asked specifically to talk to people that are within Augusta Lawn Care and people that either work for me or are franchisees. So we've tried to do that the past few weeks. Last week, we had Chuck fought from our North Carolina location as a general manager. Today, we're going to have Lee Park, who is the general manager for the local Bellingham location, which was actually the original first location for Augusta Lawn Care. And to next week, we're actually going to have Liz, who's the operations manager and really helps me a lot at the franchise level, is going to be joining the show. So you're going to get your daily dose of Augusta here in the next few weeks here on uh, Roundup. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and welcome Lee into the show. And uh, hopefully, I think today, as I was talking with Lee, you know, everyone always asks, like, what are we going to talk about? I said, really, the, the, the main objective today is really to kind of inspire the those that might be out in the field, those that might be kind of feeling like they're in a industry or in a business that they think more paycheck to paycheck, or even what am I going to do for this season, this mowing season, I'm going to get something else and kind of job hopping and just kind of giving them the inspiration and the knowledge that this is an industry you can grow in finding the right company to be able to scale with them and, and learn so much. So without any further delay, Lee, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Mike. Happy to be here. Cool. So without, um, without taking too much time, maybe just kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, obviously people know you work for Augusta. So tell us, you know, how old are you? You know, I know you got married in the past couple of years. You're getting a new house. A lot of things going on, but give us a little bit of a, the, the 30 second version of who Lee Park is. Yeah. 30 second. Uh oh, did I lose you? Oh, uh, married to my beautiful wife. Can you hear me, Lee? Mm -mm. Either I lost him or he lost me. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, for some reason you, you dropped out there, so maybe try that part again. <laughs> okay, cool. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're just a little bit blurry, okay. but you're okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so name's Lee Park, born and raised local, Bellingham, Washington. Been married for two years now to my beautiful wife, Sarah. Um, been working for Augusta three and a half total years, I think, now. And uh, went to school in Chicago. Didn't really know what I was going to do with my life, but I knew I liked working outside. I knew I liked working with my hands. And uh, that's kind of how I found Augusta. So that's kind of like the quick 30-second intro. Cool. And so... Tell us what you were doing before you came to Augusta and kind of the whole interview process. But at that time, I was still very much in day-to-day -day operations. We were up in Blaine. Uh, tell us kind of how that came about and what the position you kind of got hired on for was. Yeah, so I applied to Augusta because I had a typical you know, summer job lined up as a college student. I was a park ranger, and basically my time was going to end in September there. And uh, the park I worked at, it was like a private RV park, was less than a mile away from the old Blaine shop. And I was like, well, I've seen these trucks drive by every day. And I was like, maybe I'll just go over there and, and, and drop off a resume. So that's when I first met Liz. I just dropped off a resume and I just was like, hey, you know, I, I have a little bit of experience with some equipment. I, I see you guys are local. Just figured I'd drop off my resume, see if you guys were hiring. Um, and so I didn't meet you until the interview process. Actually, I just met with Liz. Liz basically, you know, passed the res my resume off to you. Um, and you and I did a quick, you know, 10 minute interview and from there, I guess you just kind of offered me a position to start mowing lawns. So, so, so the, just for everyone listening, the back end of that story is he came to us in September and we usually don't hire people in September because in our market, our spring rush is really where we need the most help. And then we try to solidify a solid group and then keep them all the way through the rest of the year. So we weren't necessarily looking for a whole bunch of people to join the team, but definitely after Liz met with him and then I interviewed him, it was like, Hey, we have to get this. This person's really, really good. And someone potentially long-term could be with the team. And at the time we didn't necessarily know we were going to franchise, but definitely looking for, we knew we were going to scale. And so having someone like Lee, we knew we could not, pass him by or let him go get another job and so i think it was pretty quick you joined right like you just gave like did it, we contacted you right away and you gave your two weeks notice yeah i, I didn't even really have time to give a two weeks notice because i like had an end date like i had a summer position basically as a park ranger so you guys were like hey if you want to join you can give your two weeks and i was like i can start literally at the end of this week and i think i started within like five days very cool so for from someone's perspective like yours that has it was pretty quick and now now, now been with us for, you know, three and a half uh, years, kind of maybe summarize the changes 
not so much on your level, but from a business standpoint, Augusta in general, obviously when you joined, I think we probably had five or six people, maybe seven, I, I forget. Um, but kind of walk through what changes you've seen over the past three and a half years now. Yeah, I guess to give kind of the quick quick synopsis would be obviously the, the big one's going to be personnel change and um, location change. So we grew pretty substantially. So when I got hired, I worked through the winter. So you only ha you had a couple people that were kind of part time. So yeah, there were um, two guys that worked kind of part time with us. And, and then it was um, me and four other guys that were kind of the main crew um, that worked through the winter. And then you had two part time guys kind of helping us out. So when I got hired, I, it was, you know, five trucks and five employees and you and Liz basically. And, um, from then till now, three years later, I mean, whole new shop, you know, a couple acres of property, um, and 13 trucks. And now in the field, currently 14 employees. I think I lost you again there, Lee. You were giving, um, can you hear me? Go back to where you're saying, uh, you said now are currently 13 trucks, uh, 12 guys out in the field or 14 guys out in the field. Go back to that part. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah. That was just, I was just kind of rounding that up. We were basically now 13 trucks, 14 guys in the field. And like I said, moving locations and personnel were the biggest changes, but also from a business standpoint, I don't know how much you want me to get into it. But when I got hired, we did anything under the guise of landscaping. <laughs> if it was outdoor work and you could get dirty doing it, we did it. Um, but now it's, it's very much different in the sense that we, Saying no, to our are focusing on our systems and our services. Got it. No, that's good. Cool. I got lost you for a second, but it made sense. So, in that transition point, as we've simplified services and really scaled back some of the things that we've done from a hardscaping perspective, what's been your perspective, not just as being part of that, but now that you're on the office side and seeing what that entails and that complexity of those services entails for you now being the office manager? Uh, tell me a little bit about that, your perspective and how that either was different back then or how it's changed over time. Yeah, I think being out in the field, one of the biggest things is you just assume like every day you show up and there's jobs and you don't really realize how much back end work there is. Um, you just expect to show up, you know, at 7.30, 8 a.m. every day and, and there's work for you. You don't realize you know, now moving into the office, you see the back end of, of marketing and estimates, follow up, you know, sales calls, whatever it may be, whatever your sales process is, all the work that goes into, you know, um, acquiring leads, lead acquisitions, customer acquisitions, and then getting that on the schedule as a field employee, you don't look at that. You just show up, you do your job, you park your truck at the end of the day, you hope you don't get a yellow slip and you go home, right? But seeing that now is there's so much work. There's so many people um, that are in contact with the customer before they come to the crew. that it's very crucial the crew, you know, gets their job done the way it was sold to the client, the way it was bid to the client, the way it was communicated. Um, the crew is really the final piece to deliver the product that you've been selling for weeks to this client. And you don't see that when you're in the field. You don't realize all that build up, basically. So that was the biggest change and kind of eye-opening thing for me starting in the field and now being in the office. So in 2000, end of 2019, uh, I talked to you and said, Hey, was it 2019 that we, you started doing estimating? Yeah. Yeah. So it was fall, uh, fall of 2019 is when the official switch happened. Okay. So there's that switch. And then literally 12 months later, you progressed into taking Liz's role over in the office manager side of things. Tell us about both of those transitions. So basically I taught you, it was the hardest thing for me was to give up the selling part of the business, right? Uh, right. It was, it, it, I knew I had to do it because as we got into franchising, there was just no way I was going to be able to, but it was the hardest thing to let go because it is the governor of all sales coming mm -hmm. in, all jobs coming in. If it's bid incorrectly, it can be unprofitable. If it's bid missed, the no, budget hours aren't correct. You're going to make a bunch of mad people. So it was the last thing I let go of and definitely handing off to someone as capable of capable as you was very lucky on my part, but obviously you were the first person I trained. And then you were trained again by Liz, who also had had her role for several years in the office. What was that transition like for both of those different training periods? And what have you learned now as you're really trying to set up Marcus to kind of follow in your footsteps and mm -hmm. become the office manager? 
Yeah, the, I mean, the transitions really were were fast. Like if, if anyone knows the way we do things at Augusta, we move pretty quickly, which I, which I enjoyed. And that's what I wanted. Um, I knew I didn't want to stay in the field. So I was happy that we made those transitions pretty quickly. And having um, you realize that, you know, or me realize that you trusted me to take that position was um, just more encouraging. Oh, we're losing you again here, Lee. Can you hear me? Okay. You're back now. You were saying you were saying about how uh, I was trusting you t with the estimate side of things. Oh, now I've totally lost you. <laughs> oh man, gotta love the internet. One of these days, we will have Ethernet everywhere. Even at my shop, even where I'm at currently, my office, my studio here, I'm too cheap to get internet in here. But the problem is, it doesn't even have Ethernet. So these these streams would be so much better if we had Ethernet. Um, I'm gonna try to run a cord, uh, an actual Ethernet cord to the gym, run it through the wall. But obviously on uh, on Lee's side, he's having some Wi-Fi issues. But I'm sure he'll hop back in here. But you know, for those of you that might have, you might be in the field or. I should say doing estimates right now. And you usually have at least five, six employees. It's a big transition to get your first estimator. It takes a lot of trust, but it was probably one of the best things we've ever done for the business. Lee, you're back. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. Like my, my Wi-Fi is turned off. Sarah's Wi-Fi is turned off. I don't, I don't know. I'm right next to the okay. router. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. Um, yeah. So you were kind of, we were talking about the transitions. Uh, my, I was training you to be estimator and kind of mm -hmm. that process. Yeah. So I, like I said, I, lo I love doing it that we did it fast that you, you know, instilled confidence in me by just trusting me and kind of handing me the keys and saying, Hey, you're the estimator now. Like we're going to train for, I think we did like one real interesting. We did every single thing you did for that day together from, you know, 7am to 6pm. Basically you just threw me in the deep end. And then the next Monday you were like, here are the keys go sell basically. And, and I like that. I like that. It was quick. It was you know, this, this is on the horizon for you. This is what you're going to do. You didn't baby me into it. You didn't um, hold me back. Um, you let me go out and make my own mistakes with estimating, bidding jobs, different things. Um, but you trusted me. And that's what, you know, made me want to work hard is knowing that you trusted me to, to make decisions and to come to you when I was either overwhelmed or I needed help. And that was kind of the same thing um, in the transition into Liz's position, obviously. Now that one was uh, quite a bit more drastic because obviously being an office manager, you're dealing more with personnel issues, a little bit more with um, client issues in the sense of like maybe billing or scheduling or whatever those um, issues may entail on the management side from the office. But that one was also a very quick transition, I think, because um, being the estimator and we do all our estimates through the same CRM that our office staff uses on their desktops. So I was able to kind of pick up the desktop format pretty quickly. It was more or less just honing my, you know, customer service skills, honing personnel skills, leadership skills, uh, and the ability to manage a team. And I think that's been the biggest transition now is realizing that, you know, being an estimator, I think the two biggest takeaways I would say for, for those who are listening is number one, being an estimator is honing in your sales skill. And number two, being an office manager. How do you interpret? We lost you for about 10 seconds, but you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, sorry. You're fine. I'll, next time I'll have to give you the, one of the Ethernet cords or the adapters for your computer. It's so much better on Ethernet. I know, because I, I don't have an adapter. Otherwise, I would have plugged it in. So You're totally fine. Totally fine. So you're talking about that transition more now from the estimator role into the office manager and how that was mm -hmm. even more of a change. Yeah, yeah, that was obviously a very drastic change because you are no longer really, I mean, you're still selling, right? If you, if a client calls you, you pick up the phone and you're still trying to sell them their job or whatever it may be. But the transition is so much more about people management um, and interconnections with people, reading the room, um, knowing when to push your team, knowing when to pull back, knowing when to draw the line with a client, knowing when to give a little bit of ground to a client, whatever that may be, that dynamic there. Um, that's, that is really hard. And that's what I would say. And now training Marcus, cause then he kind of alluded to that. 
Um, I had, to, I told him the hardest part about being an office manager is all day you are balancing. That's your whole job. If I could sum it into one word, it's balance. You are balancing your crews. You're balancing push who to back, what what way, right? And then you're also balancing client relations. You know, the the clients you love, you want to get more work from them. You're gonna push. You're gonna sell to them. The clients that you don't like, you're balancing making sure you get paid. Um, you know, emotions. They don't want to get sent to collections. All these things um, that you are balancing constantly day to day. And then from the hierarchical standpoint, I'm balancing, making sure I'm connected to you and Liz, but I'm also balancing, making sure I'm connected to my guys that are out in the field every single day. So can you speak a little bit, uh, kind of, kind of our philosophy? I know from a management standpoint, we've talked about before, but you know, my, my thoughts on bringing someone up as a manager from the field, instead of going out and hiring elsewhere. And even how this year we're now pulling again from the field as you know, that, that kind of the, the chain keep we kind of keep moving people off the top mm -hmm. at the local mm -hmm. shop um can you speak to that a little bit and just kind of our theory on why that's so important for the team it's really important um and i i know people use this like uh, metaphor as like a bad a bad thing i'm going to use it positively it's like been there done that right we we want people that have been in the same position that the field crews have been in to be their management per se to be the estimator to be the office manager, because I know, like I said, when I'm balancing, you know, we got to get this job done, but I also know my guys are tired and worn out and maybe a little upset with me. Um, I know that in the back of their head, they know, Hey, Lee's done this before he's been in bad positions, you know, and I, and I had a recent conversation with one of my project managers and I said, Hey, you would never know it. But at times Liz and I were really mad at each other and you would never know it because our emotions didn't matter in those moments. What mattered is we made the client happy and we got the job done. And, um, that's kind of been what you have to figure out as an office manager is, is, um, realizing that you've been there and remembering those emotions, right? Remembering what, how you felt in those moments and remembering, you know, when to push your guys, when to comfort them. Um, and like I said, it's, it's about balance. I'm going to keep going back to that because that's really what I've found in this last year. Um, and that's why we want to bring people up through that. We want someone who started push mowing lawns and understands, you know, raining in the, or mowing in the rain, like in our climate, some of you guys' climates, you don't, but we have to in Washington. So like, we want someone to know that feeling. So when they're in the office and they have an opinion, they still remember that pain of the days where they mowed in the rain. Right. Very cool. And, and I, th I know for some people, like turnover is a big problem. And for us locally, our turnover is almost artificial in the fact that it's not necessarily that we're losing people. We actually, mm -hmm. we're, we're taking those people and moving them into the franchise or like they're moving and starting their own location. And it's unfortunately mm -hmm. it's our best people. So right. know, I and Liz used to be there every day. We're no longer there on a daily basis. Uh, you know, Nick was one of our best out in the, in the field. He's moved on, started his own location. Tyler and Austin, Austin been around for almost as long as you. He's now moving on, starting his own franchise. Next year, Brad will probably be coming out of the field to help with the franchise how how have you dealt with uh that turnover and whether you know most people might not have that same kind of uh you know upward mobility but they do have turnover how have we dealt with that and from the office standpoint your perspective is it simplified services what things do you do to kind of allow that process to take place mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously, the, the, the one you mentioned is simplified services, right? We want someone to be able to be trained within, you know, four weeks maximum is kind of our, our max, we, we will let someone train. At that point, it's kind of like, hey, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. Uh, or you got to find another place that's going to suit you better. So uh, most people, if you find the right people, obviously, you hire the right people, um, you're gonna get them up to speed on simplified services in four weeks. So one of our most recent hires, um, he's going solo actually for his first day tomorrow, and he's only two and a half weeks in. Um, we hired him because he was motivated, he had the right character, and he said he wanted to work hard. He's proved that he's ready to go solo. Um, and he will be a profitable employee after only two and a half weeks of training, and he'll make great P for P money starting tomorrow. I, I guarantee it, and I know it. So, uh, and that's because all the all he's done for two and a half weeks is mow. He's done some mulch installs, and he's done some small cleanup. He now again. I don't know. My screen went black. You're fine. You're, you're back now. Yep. You're talking about Casey and how he's back mm -hmm. on after two and a half weeks. He's been trained up and ready to roll.
Right. So that, and that's how we deal with the turnover. The biggest thing is going to be simplified services and uh, being, you know, quick, quick to fire, quick to hire, right? We're going to hire a lot based on character. Um, and that was Casey. He had no experience in the industry, but it was all character. You know, um, he knew one of the guys already on our team who kind of gave a little bit of a character witness for him, said he's a good guy. He said he wanted to work hard. His references were glowing. So I said, I'm going to train the right people. Um, and he's good to go. And, but on the flip side, we're quick to fire. So we had two guys that were going into their third week. I kind of asked you and Liz for your opinion. I was like, hey, here's kind of the situation with these two guys that I recently hired. Um, you guys gave me some advice, but left the ball in my court. And I just said, you know, what? I'm just going to let them go because I need the crew to know that, you know, we want people that are going to be here to show up and actually work hard um, and be there to support the team. So those are kind of the two main reasons I would say it's, um, you know, simplified services and then be quick to hire and quick to fire. Um, and then you can kind of put up with anything. I mean, this season, yes, we had a really good core group going into spring. But since then, I mean, it's a pretty different team already, you know, four months after spring, it's already a very different team. And that's just because we've simplified services. We've honed in our training and how we train our guys and we're quick to hire, quick to fire. Very cool. In terms of, you know, your development over the past few years, personally, and then from a business standpoint, what are some of the things you've had to change or adapt to as you've moved up in the company uh, in terms of either business knowledge or just self-improvement? What are some of those things you've done? And maybe speaking to the guy out in the field that wants to get ahead, become an estimator, become an office manager, uh, get out of the field one day, what would you say to that person in terms of preparing themselves for those positions? Yeah. So I know you guys have heard us talk about it a lot, but the biggest thing for me was audible. So I listened to a lot of the audiobooks, Um, and I know after you kind of move. You told me you me quite listening to the books. The same with Marcus. Marcus started listening to the books. He started asking me and Liz and you questions about the books. Um, you know, have you read this Dale Carnegie book? Whatever it may have been. Um, and that just helps you grow and learn. So if you're in the field right now, I would say either one, convince your owner, your boss to, to start a team audible account or two, do it yourself and start your own audible account and share it with your coworkers. Cause it's going to bring so much value. Um, and we've shared our list, I think on landscape business course, Facebook group. And I'm sure you could ask Mike to, to post it somewhere again. We'd happily would, but we have over 200 books, you know, business books, self-help books, you know, motivational books, discipline books, whatever it may be. Those really helped. And then two, just absorbing content within the industry. So I, before I got hired in Augusta, didn't care about uh, landscape YouTube, didn't care about mowing lawns, like none of that stuff. Um, but, you know, like I, I follow Mike's content. I'm not just an employee of his. Like I, I watch every piece of content he puts out. At least I try to. Um, you know, I follow, you know, um, Brian's lawn maintenance. I follow B&B, like all those guys, Florida Turf Bros. Like I, I just want to gain that knowledge because um, you can learn little bits from from all those different guys. So those are going to be the two main things I would say is just getting content about the industry. How do you run a business? How do you better yourself? And then two, those audible books that we always preach about. I mean, just very important. So when like, I you know I came to you, I obviously had recognized that same, you know, attributes and you, the ability to learn and grow. And, you know, I remember you came back from, cause you left for a stint, like five, six yeah. months ago, <laughs> finish up your, your uh, degree at Moody. Yeah. And you came back and you're like, Hey, like I'm gonna have a meeting with Mike. And I fully anticipate you're like, Hey, <laughs> I'm going to go become like a pastor or go get, I got a job somewhere else. And then yeah, sure enough, yeah. you're like, Hey, I'm coming back. And that it was that kind of that point moment. It's like, Hey, make potentially, maybe this is someone. And then over time, just seeing your development and your growth uh, and your ability to your willingness to learn. And even, you know, as we go into next year and bring even, you know, younger and less experienced people into the estimator and office manager role. That's kind of been the theme, which is like, are they willing to learn? Are they able to learn? Have they honed the craft of learning? Because if they could do that, we can teach them the, the, the basic systems. Um, let's see here. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over, you know, obviously this past year, June, 2021 was a really, really good month at the local shop. We did 185,000 revenue. You did 63,000 in profit. Uh, that quarterly profit, so we just finished Q2, you did 130,000 in quarterly profit versus last year, which is 40,000 in quarterly profit for the same quarter. What were, what do you think some of the differences were between last year and this year? Obviously, like I mentioned on the podcast the other day, we did uh, uh, trailer setups and we raised prices, but what are some mm -hmm. of the other things that are a little bit more, uh, you know, hands, you know, boots on the ground that, you know, we've changed the past 12 years, 12 months to make the business more efficient and, and really be able to achieve that? 
Yeah, the, obviously you you said it there in the trailer with setups. Um, that's that's one of the biggest ones, right? I noticed right away when we switched to the trailer with setups. I mean, those dense city routes were just getting done so much faster. So that was a really big one. Um, but other things, you know, I, like I've said it before, but simplifying services has really helped, um, especially last spring when I was the estimator. I think for those of us who are estimators, sometimes you get a little overzealous and you you are attracted by the big ticket items or you're attracted by um, you know, the custom work or whatever it may be. So you want to sell that, right? It's somewhat of a pride thing. You know, you want to prove it to yourself, to your boss, whoever, um, that you can build that patio, that you can do that wall, you can figure it out. And there's something to like about, you know, a tenacious um, estimator who wants to get every job, but um, that's just not the model we've taken on this year. We've decided we will tell people, you know, over the phone before we even meet them, hey, we don't do that type of work. But if you have a cleanup, would you like to have our estimator still come out and meet you? Um, we'll still set up those appointments, right? Um, but that's really been the biggest thing is really simplifying services and focusing in our training on, you know, mowing, cleanups, installs, and very, very basic hardscaping. So I think this year we've actually done one wall and one patio. And we're just going into July. And like you said, it's been our most profitable quarter in a long time. And that's because we've cut out patios and walls and people think that those are such good big ticket items to drive that revenue and drive that profit. But really um, for us, it's been the exact opposite. Cause I know last spring I was selling patios and walls every week. And I know this spring Marcus just hasn't. And um, that's just not what we're trying to do anymore. What would you say to the guy out in the field that potentially might not be with a company that is growing really quickly like we are and having that very clear, like, hey, you can move up in this business. What would you say to that person to either improve themselves or become more uh, marketable to get that type of position? What would you say to them? Because I know for so many people out in the field, uh, out working, they feel like this is a dead end job or they're just doing it to get the next paycheck. Uh, what would you say to them to just give them kind of more of a financial uh, future that they can look forward to? Yeah, I would say, you know, if, if you're in the field right now, um, one, just kind of look at your surroundings, you know, does, does your boss, your manager, does he care? Um, right. Do other people on the team care? Um, culture is king at Augusta. We say that a lot and, and we believe that. And so for me, um, going, you know, starting as Augusta is just a guy mowing lawns, not knowing Mike, not knowing Liz, um, it was seeing their character and seeing that like, these are good people. They care about me. They care about my success. They care about their success. So um, if they care about mine and theirs in tandem, like the business will succeed, right? Um, they can't succeed without me succeeding if they're a good person, morally speaking, and they're going to pay you. Um, and then two, just go the extra mile for your boss. Like check that first box. Are they a good person morally? Like, do I want to work for them? Do they run their business morally, legally, ethically, whatever it may be? Um, and then go all in for them, you know, go the extra mile, stay the late nights, come in early, take things off their plate. Um, that's one of the things that I would always try to do. Cause once I realized like, no, this is a company I think I want to stay out for a while. Um, that's what I started doing, you know, even, um, you know, when I know Mike had just as long of a day as me or Liz or whatever it may be, it's just like, Hey, how can I help you before I leave? You know, just those simple questions, right. Um, showing up and then, you know, sit down with your, your boss, your manager, your owner, and just, you know, say, Hey, what are the next steps for me? What can I look forward to? What can I do to move, um, the business forward? Right. And, and I know Mike has said this a lot of times he said it at pretty much every conference and I'm sure he'll say it again. Um, but whenever employees are like, well, why can't you pay me more? As the boss used to say, you know, well, here's all the things I do in a day. What can you take off my plate? I'll pay you to take those things, right? And that's what you should do as a field worker. If you want more responsibility, if you want more ownership of the business to get compensated more, to get more respect, a leadership position, whatever it may be your driving factor, just ask your boss, what can I take off your plate? I want to help more. I'm all in. Awesome. That's very good. I uh, check out a question here. When you dispatch your crew routes for the day, do you try to cater to your employee strengths like projects versus mowing or try to keep them balanced to prevent burnout on doing the same thing every day? Yeah, that's a great question, Chuck, and great uh, interview with Mike the other week. That was phenomenal. So you're doing good things over there. Yeah, so I try to, obviously, you want to play to your people's strengths, right? You, you really do want to do that, but it's also balancing the, the burnout, right? So I know if I had a guy that maybe, you know, accidentally or the schedule worked out where he mowed five days last week, the next Monday, yeah, I might try to put him on a cleanup project just so that way he comes in the week refreshed knowing, oh, okay, it's Monday and I'm not mowing again, right? It's just a balance, but there are some projects that 
Well, as you simplify services, you won't have to play to so many people's strengths, right? I know now, now that we just got our, our mo most recent hire and um, fully trained up, anyone on our team can do just about any job where we have sold and booked out right now. I can put anyone on it. You know, they might need to ask a lot of questions to me or Marcus because maybe they haven't done a lot of those jobs, but they could figure it out, right? So a little bit of a balance there, Chuck, if that makes sense. Cool. Uh, like four or five people have asked this. What's your next oh. step, Lee, a franchise? So uh, before, you know, I'll preface this question too in, in saying, you know, why wouldn't, like, especially as the past three years have gone on, you've gotten way more management experience, business experience. I know you're now deeper into things in terms of marketing and hiring and management of people and all the rest of that. And that's, you know, you've just been feeding on all of that. A lot of that feeding on that entrepreneurial kind of, uh, you know, inspiration, I would say, what, mm -hmm. what has it been like? Why haven't you gone just doing your own thing? I know there's definitely down the road. It's going to be something you want to do. We've talked about, you know, you opening up a wing stop one day, <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, what is the next step? I know we, we kind of know like next year, but my deeper question is why haven't you now just gone and done your own thing? And, um, you know, I'll let you go. Can I speak to that? Nope. Oh, I lost you right then. Put a cliffhanger. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Start again, Lee. I, yep, go ahead. No, you're good. I heard your question. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think for me, I'm just fully bought into the vision of Augusta um, locally and, and with through the franchise that I think for me, I kind of want to just stick it out like with you and Liz and, and help all the other franchisees. Um, part of that being that I can honestly say uh, three years ago, I would have no right stepping into the role I'm in now. And it's literally just all because of on the job training, working at bettering myself, asking Mike, Liz, all my guys around me, tons and tons of questions, just trying to glean knowledge from whoever I could to better myself. Um, that I'm just so bought into what we're doing on more of a macro scale that as of right now, I don't know if I want to do that on a micro scale for myself. Um, you know, I know right now I would love to, you know, move to a warmer climate where I didn't have to bag <laughs> and start my own <laughs> franchise. That would be fantastic. I would love to do that. Take a month off, go to the Bahamas, whatever. But I think I'm just so bought into what we're doing here and, and wanting to change the industry and wanting to help others. Um, that's why we do it. And that's why I want to stick it out and, and see what um, this has for me in the long run to stay, you know, with the franchise um, and not start my own. And in the short term, to answer Phil's question directly, next next spring, uh, Lee will be helping a lot more with the operational side for the franchisees, answering their questions, monthly coaching calls, things like that, because he has the operational experience and the field experience and the business experience as well. Um, question here that came in that I wanted to, and now I'm losing them. Uh, where'd it go? Here it goes. What's this one? What do you do with someone who's stagnating? Let's say they're really good at mowing, cleanup, et cetera, but should we keep them on the team? Milton, go for it. Yeah, uh, Milton, that's a great question. And um, I know a lot of times people prop Augusta up on a pedestal, but these are things we go through and I honestly might be currently going through um, with some of our team members. <laughs> but <laughs> Okay, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, maybe at the end of the day, pulling them to the side and just checking in on them. Not even, not even making it about work, right? Hey man, how you doing? Like, what'd you do this weekend? Um, you know, oh, you got some time off coming up. What are, what are you planning on doing? Hang out with friends, family, just trying to reconnect with them on a personal level um, because you interact with them all day as their manager, as their boss. Um, so why continue that relationship? Why force that relationship when that's the one way they know you and have connected with you? I think if you can get them to really connect with you on a personal level, um, they're going to get to care more. I'm not saying, you know, be buddy, buddy with them and, and have this close knit friendship, but I'm saying, you know, connect with them on a personal level, C show them you care about them um, and then encourage them, find a way to encourage them. You know, Hey, if you have an audible account, Hey, I, you know, this book's been really good for me recently. I think you'd get a lot out of it. Maybe listen to this or a podcast or a YouTube, uh, one of Mike's YouTube videos, right? Hey, Mike posts this video about uh, five ways to make your uh, lawn care setup more efficient. You should watch it. Tell me, tell me what you think. Did, did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, find ways to connect with them, not specifically about, you know, how was your mow route today or how was Mrs. Smith, right? Um, and, and show them you care about them and then put, and then you can start to kind of push them in the direction you want them to go. How can you have like, so I kind of look at it as like, you know, the personal side, like you mentioned, kind of having money in the bank. 
so that when you need to make a withdrawal and really pull them up short when they are, say, for example, stagnating, you actually mm -hmm. have something to lean on. And that is like, look, I actually do care about you. And this is mm -hmm. not necessarily about this job or Augusta or making more mm -hmm. money on this paycheck. It's about your future and like the, your mentality. Have you had to have those conversations now being more in a role of, <clears throat> no, I, wanna, I don't like the word, but HR or like kind of dealing with the people side of the business more? Yeah, I mean, I had to have one of those this spring. So obviously, you know, we as a business, it, it evolves, right? And so I think a lot of people were used to you being around or Liz being around, um, you know, so you kind of had like three managers that were kind of co-opting um, the HR and people's emotions and feelings. And Liz is phenomenal at that. So that was the biggest hole I had to fill. Um, taking that position was that that confidant, someone who is emotionally intelligent, can connect with people um, and make sure they feel cared for. And yeah, I've had to have a couple of those this spring. I mean, it was my first full spring and, and we had some long. And so it's obviously going to be mostly male dominated. So the guys I had to talk to, I was like, hey, we're all men here. Like, let's just talk it out. I can sense there's tension. I know there's something wrong. Like, I'm not completely blind. Like, what's up? Let's just put it on the table and just laying it out. Like you said, you know, it's not about the jobs. It's not about me punishing or manipulating the routes to have someone have a better day than the other person. It's like, we just, as a team have to move the ball down the field and get it done. And when someone makes a mistake, sometimes three or four people have to cover that mistake. Um, and those are just the ways you evolve as a team. And, and then you find your leaders in that, right? The ones who understand that will rise to the occasion and then boom, you just start giving them more opportunities and they're your leaders. And the ones that don't care will either wash out or stagnate. And then you have to talk to them individually. Right. For for someone in in an owner's role, Lee, that is potentially trying to find someone like you, what can they do to number one attract someone of your caliber? Number two, retain them, and number three, if they're actually looking to get someone in the office for the first time, or maybe get an estimator role, or even like a number two out in the field, what are some of the things they should be doing? Like, if you could talk to me five years ago, like, what would you be saying now coming through the whole system? Because starting next spring, you'll be the only person ever that's gone from field to estimator to office manager to now actually being in the franchise and actually advising the franchisees. Um, what can you say in terms of finding that person and what should the owner be doing to making sure that's an easy transition? Yeah, I think, um, number one, not to get preachy, but I think it was a God thing that I walked into Augusta and dropped off my resume. Like, I don't know why I did. I just did. You were the business down the road. There were three other businesses down the road and I didn't take a resume to any of them, but I took a resume to Augusta. Right. So I, that was coincidence. If you want to call it that dumb luck that I just showed up to Augusta. Um, but for, for those, you know, managers out there, those owners out there that want to find high caliber people and, and thank you, Mike, I, I, uh, it, I appreciate that. Um, you know, just, um, when you find the, someone you like, when you find someone that cares, when you have that tough conversation, maybe with a core group of guys. And like I said, one of them rises to the occasion, hone in on that person, you know, offer them, um, extra time with you. Hey, like, I'd love to get lunch with you. Um, Mike did that with me a couple of times. Like, let's just get lunch. Like on me, I want to, I want to take you to lunch. And we just talked and I, he showed that he cared about me and then told me, you know, about some opportunities possibly coming up and, you know, Hey, when he started realizing that I might be the estimator, you know, he started kind of um, dropping the little bits of knowledge like, hey, I might want you to be the estimator one day. That's going to come with a pay raise probably. So I want you around like I want you to keep learning, you know, engage with them and they will engage with you. And I think that's what has made me stick around with with Mike and Liz and Augusta is just because um, of that engagement and, um, you know, Mike giving me goals, setting bars. And if I achieve them then we'd move forward. So, um, you know, set realistic goals for people that you want to move up in your company, I would say is probably one of the biggest things and make sure they're attainable, right? Like all the goals that Mike set for me weren't egregious, crazy. They weren't sales goals. They weren't like revenue goals. They were just like, here are the, the benchmarks I want you to get to. And when you get there, we'll, you know, we'll have a discussion about your pay. We'll, we'll make sure you're compensated for the things you're achieving. And that made me work even harder and care more. Um, so that would be the biggest thing. As far as like finding people, I mean, that's tough. Like I, I, I think for me, and if I'm getting long winded here, uh, I think for me, finding people, I've really this spring, every hire that we have had at the local shop has had no experience. And, um, you know, I think I've fired three people this spring and we currently have five people um, that have worked. So I've hired eight people 
My first time ever as an office manager. I've hired eight people. Five currently have worked out. I'm over 500%. That's all-star batting <laughs> average. Uh, <laughs> no, but but I think I just hired on character. Um, the two biggest things I was looking for in the interview process, you know, trying to glean what their character was. And then the second thing is, you know, I don't care about this interview right now. What do you want to do in life? And listening to that answer, did they have passion? Did they have a goal? Did they have anything that they cared about to, to share with me? That kind of was my inclination that, you know, this person has a little bit of drive. They want to do something and I might take a chance and, and we'll train them. So just out of curiosity, you know, when I look at, you know, like we interviewed Chuck last weekend, last week, um, yourself, you know, next week will be Liz for someone in your position that really, I love the sticker, by the way, love that. <laughs> um, Gotta have it. Someone in your position, like when I look at the way that, you know, last month's financials were in this quarter, um, the way that you handled, you know, yellow slips, even in throughout June that were really brutal for the team. Um, and I look at someone like yourself, Chuck, et cetera, and you really do treat the business like you do have equity, like you do own it. Um, mm -hmm. why, like at the end of the day, why do you look at the business and sacrifice? I know so much time, even during the spring rush time with your family time. Um, you know, there's so much sacrifice that someone like yourself, Chuck, Liz have put into the business. Why? Why do you do it? And, you know, yeah, like I, I, I honestly sometimes do wonder, like, uh, it's when I, especially when I like, like Saturday, I was looking at the financials and I'm like, I didn't, wasn't there. Uh, we had a lot of difficulties throughout June with some really unhappy customers and mm -hmm. you and Marcus defended the company. You kept customers and you really had to pull a lot of the team in to, you know, make up for some lost ground. And you really treated it like your own without me having to ask you to step up or anything like that. Why? Like, what, what is that about your, either your personality? Like, I don't know. Like, what can someone potentially do in, in, to become that valuable? Mm -hmm. I, me, the, the number one thing for me is I respect from others and try to um, be myself is just be uh, reliable. And I think just because I've really bought into what Augusta does, like I want to be a reliable employee. Yes, I'm running, as we use the term loosely, the local shop, but I'm at the end of the day, an employee, and I want to be a respectful, reliable employee. And I want the crew to be, you know, respectful and reliable employees as well. Uh, and that's part of it. Like I just, I, I think it might be, maybe it's personal. I don't know. Like I never want to be the guy who doesn't show up. I never want to be the guy that shows up last. I never want to be the guy that leaves first. Like I want to work hard and prove myself every day. And so that's part of it. And then two, um, like you said, you know, um, at conference, like you want employees that are money motivated. I'm very money motivated. Like, uh, my wife and I just bought our first house. And so like, I'm very money motivated right now. Mortgage is not a small thing to sign the 60 different dotted lines on like um so i'm very money motivated and i want to have you know generational wealth and i want to make sure my family's comfortable um and and i just buy into the vision ultimately i think that's number one i, I buy into the vision of what we're doing here um we're not just a company we're not cutting grass um i said this to marcus if this video well it's going public but if our customers ever see it i said this to marcus we don't really care about grass like we we like we want your we want your lawn to look good yes we want to service your property we want to make it look good but we really care at augusta at the core like changing the industry um and making sure that it's a professional across the board for everyone so that we can all have careers in this industry and i've just bought into that vision so i'm not going to give up until really we see that fulfilled as, last question for you lee and that is um kind of as you have become more involved in the industry, whether it be at conference, just digging into the content more, my own, as well as a lot of other people. I know you're, you're pretty uh, in delving into a lot of other areas. Uh, what has been the thing that has surprised you or do you see as like a lack or a weakness in this industry that you could pass along to either owners or general manager or people that are trying to run these businesses? What would the de deficiency be that you kind of see as a con constant theme? Hmm. Could you rephrase? <laughs> I, I I see what you're asking, but I just want to make you, sure I get out. Like, if you had to talk to you know basically any landscape owner uh, and give them you know a tip of a mm -hmm. piece of advice or something that you constantly mm -hmm. see people tripping up on or failing in this industry, I know it's a pretty difficult question. But like, yeah, yeah. what are some of the common themes 
that you see being a struggle that uh, either you figured out or potentially would have advice for someone getting started? And of course, we lost you right then. <laughs> Give it again. Go again. Go ahead again. No, you're good. I, all I said was that it's a tough question. Um, I, I think, um, man, I, I like this question. It's, it's a lot to chew on. Probably one of the biggest parts is, um, I mean, I, I know I said balance a bunch, but like kind of balancing your care. Um, and realizing like, if you're a manager now, you know, if I'm speaking more to the manager's owners, um, you have to realize your employees are never going to care as much as you. And that, and that sucks um, until you, you know, motivate them either with P for P or give them equity in the business or whatever it may be profit sharing. Um, like we do, we definitely see more care um, for the business, but you know, you have to realize like no one's ever going to care as much as you. It's your baby. You built it. Right. And, and that stuff And the, your, your customer will drop you like a hot rock. If the new guy makes one mistake, right. They're not going to care as much as you. Um, and I think it's moving forward and probably the biggest thing to kind of go back to audible is like Simon Sinek's book, infinite game is realizing you were playing an infinite game. So I think, um, to kind of answer your question now more directly working to an answer is that, um, not getting caught on those little things, you know, whatever the theme of those little things may be, is that realizing that they're going to happen every day, every week, you're going to get a mad client every day, something's going to break down. So like, you, you know what I mean? Two, it's going to two one star reviews in the past. We, couple days. <laughs> we had two, I know we had two one star reviews this week. I, I, 4th of July was great. I walked through the office Monday morning, <laughs> opened my email, one star review. They had a bad fourth, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think moving past those, right? Like knowing that if you're the owner manager speaking to you right now, um, that you're the one who's going to care the most and you have to not take those little things, you know, learn from them, definitely learn from them, but realize you're playing an infinite game. Um, whether your infinite game is, you know, generational wealth for your kids and, and your family, or whether it's to change the professionalism in the landscape industry, like Mike's doing, um, whatever it may be, um, that's, that's actually be your, you know, your North star and you have to go for that and focus on that at the end of every day. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lee. I really appreciate you coming on the show. I really do. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be here, man. I'll, I'll let, I'll put you off and I'll, I'll see you in just two seconds. Cool. Sounds good. So I took him off because now I want to say thank you to him without him being on the stream meal interrupt. So, uh, before, before we close out, I do want to say a massive thank you to Lee. Uh, he is absolutely a big reason why I was able to step away from the local shop and spend so much time focusing on the content, focusing on the franchisees. And there's people, there's a few people that will stick with you so closely. And, you know, as I've said before to employees that say, Hey, I want to, you know, grow in, in the business and learn more about the business. I say, Hey, get as close as you can to the sun, which is the owner, get as close to them, do as much as you can for them. And someone like Lee, I think is a good example for anyone out there that is out in the field wanting to grow in their career, learn more about business, become more of a manager role. And that is really doing exactly what he did for me. And that was take stuff off of my plate. He cared genuinely for the team. He cared genuinely about the business, cared genuinely for the profitability of the company, cared about the vision, why we were doing what we were doing. And it wasn't something that was necessarily I was advertising the positions for. It was something that when the position came available and we needed somebody, Lee was the one that I knew I could dump something on because he had proven himself time and time and time and time again that he did show up that he did put the team first that he did do whatever he caught possibly good to learn about a job so if you're on a big really hard project if you have it's really hot it's really wet it's raining outside the person that is going to be the most consistent and this he, he mentioned he alluded to this consistency is the person that as the owner you're going to lean on you're going to look for in the time of crisis you're going to you're going to look at the person that was most consistent and they might not necessarily be the most experienced. They, they might not have all the skills. And when I actually had Lee start as the estimator, there was someone else who disagreed with that decision, made that very evident. And I fired that person to make a point. And that was, I don't really care about how, how much experience you have because that was their, their bargaining chip. I don't care how much experience you have. I don't care about how long you have been around. I don't care how old you are. We're going to figure out what's best for the team. And the best thing for the team is someone who is consistent and cares about the team. And so if you're in that position where you as an employee want to get ahead, that's what I would recommend you do, right? Lee in 10 years probably won't be with Augusta. He'll probably move on to own his own business, being super successful in some other endeavor. But at the end of the day, he at, 
the basic level, yes, pushing a lawnmower and having straight lines and caring about your team and helping someone else empty the clippings at the end of a long day and you know, giving a suggestion about the business when it has nothing to do with you, but it's the owners, but giving that suggestion, knowing full well, you're not going to get anything back in return for it besides seeing the business doing better. That's the type of thing that someone mowing lawns can very quickly in a generation or even in a decade quickly ascend career-wise, financially, and if they want to become a business owner and entrepreneur, learn so, so much. And so I really do appreciate Lee. He does so much for myself, for the franchisees, for the command center, for Liz, for Marcus, who he's now trained to be in his position. Uh, and he generally does care. And so I really, really do thank him. I think he's still he'll able to hear me, but uh, I really do appreciate everything that he does for us locally at the shop. It allows me to basically show up twice a week, I show up Monday mornings and then Wednesday mornings for 20 minutes to have team meetings. But basically it's just, you know, just to have a connection with the guys. But Lee is the one who every single day is there 12, 13 hours, figuring things out, juggling, handling bad customers, handling employees that don't show up, all of that stuff. The minutia is what he has done. And it's very difficult sometimes as an employee with the aspirations and the goals and someone like Lee that has the potential to do so much. It is sometimes hard to kind of rein in the that drive to go grow and go and keep going when it is a patient grind of daily minutia and it can be very, very taxing to be in a role where you have a lot of potential. You are very good at your job, but it's the same thing. It seems like every single day and there's certain aspects of repetition that are very positive, but there's also an element that you can kind of get bored. Like, man, I'm kind of stuck in this rut. Uh, but I so appreciate people that are patient, like Lee, like Liz, people that have come up in the organization, even like Brad that has, just done so much for me uh, and I can't thank them enough and I can't thank enough uh, Lee for coming on the show, sharing his wisdom. And uh, I hope that next week we can have Liz on the show who's been with me for the very longest at Augusta. And really since we ever, since we had just two or three people out in the field, uh, she was with me uh, in the office and now helping with the franchisees. So make sure you tune into next Tuesday evening uh, with Liz and I appreciate you being on the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you watch today's video. I shared some tips. The audio was horrible. But uh, I hope it was uh, helpful nonetheless. Take care. Have a great evening.